So far in this chapter, we've taken a look at direct and inverse variation equations. We've looked at their graphs and some of their properties. And today we're going to turn our attention to looking at some data, plotting that data over a graph, and trying to come up with whether it's an inverse or a direct variation. From there, we're going to try to find a model or an equation that fits that data. So whenever we take a data to create a mathematical model, that's called uh, fitting a model to the data. So let's jump in with just a few examples. In our first example here, we're asked to plot this data over here on our graph and see if we can come up with a variation equation that describes it. So take a minute, pause the video, and plot that data. Okay, now that we've plotted our data, let's see if we can just kind of sketch a line through these points to see if we can come up with a shape that's recognizable as one of our direct or inverse variation shapes. So if I were to draw a line through this, I see that uh, that line wouldn't pass through all those points, but as I'm going from left to right, I see that I start up, I fall back down, and then come back up again. So this looks like to be the shape of a parabola, which suggests the, uh, the direct variation equation y equals k times x squared. Remember, if it's y equals k times x, that would be linear. If it were y equals k over x, that would be one of our hyperbolas. So we have the parabola y equals k times x squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute one of our ordered pairs, one of our data sets, into our formula and see if we can find the value of k. So let's choose the data set 2 as x and 12.8 as y. So we'll write 12.8 is equal to k times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. So if I divide both sides here by 4, I'll end up with a value of k to be equal to 3.2. Now let's take and rewrite our variation formula. Uh, y is equal to 3.2 times x squared. Now, our final step really should be to take another point, another uh, data set, point out, our, out of our data set, and to check its accuracy simply by uh, plugging our y value in, which in this case is 20, uh, instead of that equal to 3.2 times 2.5 squared. Now, when we square 2.5 and multiply by 3.2, we do get the value of 20. So we can see that this is our correct model that fits this data. All right, example two is very similar. We want to start off by plotting our data and see if we can uh, tell by the shape of the graph which variation equation it will be. So go ahead, pause the video and plot your data. Okay, now that you have your data plotted, or at least most of your data plotted, you'll notice that I didn't plot all of it, but it's enough to tell the trend of what's happening to those data. Again, if I were to try to draw a line through it, I could do a, a straight line, but I notice that straight line does not pass through the origin. And it also looks like there's a little bit of a curve to that data. In other words, as it gets closer to, or sorry, as it uh, grows on the x-axis, it looks like it's getting closer to that x-axis but possibly not touching it. So this is going to suggest to me an inverse variation because this is in the shape of a hyperbola. Now let's go ahead and write that y equals k divided by x. And we should now go ahead and substitute in a value to see if we can find the value of k. So let's take 75 and 2. 75 is equal to k over 2. If I multiply both sides by 2, my value for k should be 150. Now, this tells me that my equation should be y equals 150 
over x. I should go ahead and check that accuracy with one other point from my table. So let's check the point 60 and 2.5. So 60, oops, I'm sorry, 2.5 should be the result when I take 150 and divide it by 60. And I see that 2.5 is the result of 150 divided by 60, and therefore this is the correct inverse variation equation. And now I'm going to use this equation to predict the value of x when y is 100. So let's substitute 100 in for y. And I have 150 over x. And now what I need to do is solve for x. So I'm gonna start by multiplying both sides by x. So now I have 100x is equal to 150, because these x's will cancel out. Divide both sides by 100. And x is equal to 150 divided by 100, or 1.5. All right, that's how we can use a, a function that models our data to make predictions on other values for our data set. Let's take a look at one more example. A ball is dropped from a 40-story building. It's distance d. It travels in meters. Over time, it falls. t in seconds is found in this table. Use the data to find a model for the distance a ball falls due to gravity over t seconds. Pause the video and plot your points. Okay, now that you have your points plotted, let's go ahead and see if we can find a variation equation that is suggested by the shape of this data. Again, if I were to draw a straight line through this, I see that it's not increasing at the constant rate. So it's not one of those y equals k times x direct variation. But I do see as one variable increases, the other variable increases Fairly, sharp, fairly sharply. So this is going to be a direct variation equation, and I'm going to take the guess that it's going to fit the direct variation equation y equals k times x squared. So our next uh, task here is to pick a data set. Let's take the point 2 uh, in 19.6, and let's find the value for k. So 19.6 should be equal to when k uh, is multiplied by 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to divide 4 off of both sides. Now, the remaining value is k, which is equal to 4.9. So let's write our variation equation. It states that y, or in this case d, I should say, is equal to 4.9 times t squared. So the distance of ball falls due to gravity is 4.9 times the time in seconds it falls squared. All right, now let's use this variation equation for part C to predict how far a ball will fall in eight seconds. So our distance is equal to 4.9 times eight squared. Eight squared is 64. 64 times 4.9 results in a long, long way to fall or 313.6 meters. All right, now finally we're asked um, to come up with uh, how long a ball will fall before hitting the ground from 182 meters up. So for this problem, you're going to substitute 182 for your distance, set that equal to your 4.9 times t squared, and now solve for t. Divide 4.9 off of both sides, t squared will then be equal to 37 and some change. You need to take the square root of both sides, and when you do that, you should get the time in seconds to be approximately six seconds.